In painting, we have three primary colors, yellow, blue, and red. These colors can't be mixed, but we can use them to mix all the other colors of the rainbow. Let's rearrange our colors to create a color wheel. We always hold our color wheel with yellow pointing upwards. We can now mix colors next to each other on the wheel to form secondary colors. Green, orange, and purple. Our primary and secondary colors together form our completed color wheel. But before we can start using our color wheel, we need to understand how light works. So let's put the color wheel aside and look what happens when light falls on an object. If we increase the amount of light falling on an object, more light is reflected off the object and it appears brighter. The opposite happens when we decrease the amount of light. This transition from light to dark is called tonal value and can be split into 10 steps. Black is value 0, white is value 9. If we shine light through a prism, we can also see that white light consists of all the colors of the rainbow. When the light hits our object, the object absorbs all the other colors and only reflects its own color back to our eye. Let's look at our rainbow of colors again. Notice that you don't see black or white. They're two special colors. White reflects all the light back to our eye and black absorbs all the light falling on it. Because every single color on the color wheel absorbs light, we can't use them to mix white. We have to buy white paint. Black, on the other hand, can be mixed by adding three primary colors together. The three primaries then absorb all the light and none is left to reflect back to our eye. We do this in a ratio of roughly four parts blue, two parts red and one part yellow. When painting, we're actually creating an illusion because we're making a flat object appear three-dimensional. Let's take a look at our ball and try and see why does it look 3D now when it looked flat only a few seconds ago. The best way would be to compare the flat object and the three-dimensional object side by side. A flat object facing directly towards us would only consist of a single color as the light would hit the entire surface and reflect off the entire surface at the same angle. The minute our object becomes three-dimensional, the light will reflect off the object at varying angles because of the object's shape. The amount of light hitting the object will also vary as some areas of the object will be facing the light and others facing away from the light. The object appears brightest in the areas that are facing directly towards the light and darkest in areas pointing away from the light. As we can see, a ball has many shades of colors in it. If we were to try and mix each one, we would never get to paint. We need to simplify the amount of colors we see. We do this by finding the base color, in other words, the color the object would be if it was flat. Then we find our lightest color, and our darkest color. We call these highlights and shadow colors. When looking for our base highlights and shadow colors, we use the tonal chart. The shadow color will generally be value 0 to 2, the base color value 4 or 5, and our highlight value 7 or 9. The rest of the colors will be variations of these three. Finally, we're ready to start mixing colors. We use our color chart and all the other knowledge we have gained so far to mix realistic colors. We always mix our base color first. Compare your base color to the colors on the color wheel and find the closest match. In this example, the maroon seems to fit best somewhere between red and purple. Using our primaries, we know that our color is a mixture of red and blue. As the color is closer to red than blue, we start with a pile of red and gradually add small amounts of blue until we have matched our base color. Remember, you can always more, add more paint to the mix, but you can't take any out. Add white to the mixture to lighten or increase the tonal value if necessary. Brighten with the next color up on the color wheel. Darken with the next color down on the color wheel. 
Now that we have our base color, we can use some easy rules to mix our highlight and shadow colors. Let's take a look at the shadow color first. We know that our darkest possible shadow is black. We know that black is mixed by combining our three primary colors. If we look carefully, we will notice that by mixing opposite colors on the color wheel, we are also combining our three primary colors. So a shortcut to mixing our shadow color is to add the opposite color on the color wheel. Red and green are used to mix each other's shadow. Yellow and purple shadow each other and so do blue and orange. By mixing the opposites on the color wheel we can now expand our color wheel to look like this. Going back to our maroon ball example we can see that the majority color is red so we would use green to obtain our shadow color. All we have left now is to mix our highlight color. Our first reaction is to add white to the color we want to highlight. If we mix our highlights in this way we will find that our painting looks dull and washed out. The reason is when more light falls on an object it not only appears lighter but it also appears brighter. By adding white we are only lightening the color. We also need to brighten it by adding the next color up on the color wheel towards yellow. For example, to highlight blue we add green plus white to the blue. To highlight green we add yellow plus white to the green. With purple we can add either blue or red plus the white. It's only yellow that appears lighter and brighter when we add only white. Here we have mixed the highlight for red correctly and now we'll mix it incorrectly. Notice how much more alive our highlight looks when we have added the next color up towards yellow. Here you can compare all the colors mixed correctly and incorrectly. Seeing as we know the rules for mixing highlights, let's mix the highlight for our maroon ball. As you can see, we need three colors to make our object look three dimensional. We need a highlight, base color, and a shadow color. And that's all there is to making your paintings look three dimensional. Let's do a quick recap of our color mixing rules. We have three primary colors, yellow, blue and red, which we can't mix. We have three secondary colors, green, orange and purple. Together they form our color wheel, which we always hold with yellow pointing upwards. We use them to mix our base color by comparing our base color to the colors on the color wheel and finding the closest match. If we need to lighten our base color, we would add white. If we need to darken our base color, we would add the next color down on the color wheel. If we need to brighten our base color, we add the next color up on the color wheel. Then we mix the shadow color by adding the opposite color on the color wheel. Our final color is our highlight color which we mix by adding the next color up on the color wheel towards yellow plus white. For your own printable reference color wheel visit our website paintbasket.com You'll find lots of other interesting lessons there too.